Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another animation analysis. Today we have something from Genshin, which isn't too common, but apparently this is a fan animation collaboration from HoyoFair, where they had 25 different animators animate in 25 different styles. And while I am extremely excited and interested to see how this looks, I'm also going to preface that I might not have all the answers or, like, topics to talk about each one. I never want to, like, belittle anybody's work and anybody's style, but if there's something that I'll point out that might improve something, I'll do so. But otherwise, I'm going to stick to largely strictly technical stuff. If I notice something's a little off, I'll point it out. Other than that, I love seeing things in different styles in general, so I'm expecting to have a really good time with this one. So without further ado, let's go! Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Oh, I love that style immediately. <sighs> great action. Great physics. Great dynamic range on everything in that one. Ooh! Ooh! Oh! Oh, I loved that one too. Man. Oh! Very cartoony, alright! Very 90s, early 2000s in the style for this one. I love that. I may or may not be biased on that one. <laughs> Everyone's style so far is just really nice to look at. Loving this one. The, like, paper cutout style. Love that. Oh, we got some cutesy art. Okay, this is adorable. Uh. <laughs> that was really good uh, perspective on that one. Ooh, speaking of good perspective, Jesus Christ. Great transition, too. I don't know if they planned that between the two of them, but... That was really well done. I was about to say this might be claymation, but then they got closer and I was like, wait, those are like dolls, so... <laughs> More of like a puppeteering kind of thing. Jeez. There's just... There's so much happening. <laughs> I keep wanting to focus on one, but by the time I get my words out, we've moved on to another amazing piece. That one's closer to, uh, stop motion. It might actually be. Nah, I think it's CG. Okay. At first I couldn't tell, to be honest. In the world of Laika, it's hard to tell. I love those doll ones, those are so cool. Like the stop motion of with dolls is just adorable. Those sprites were really well done too. Man, everything is so well done with this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to really dissect too much about this one. There's a few pacing issues in a couple of them, but nothing that I would, like, want to rip apart, you know? <laughs> Yo, the 80s, 90s anime style and outing, let's go! Outing? Outro. I might be stupid. <laughs>
man, the effects on this one. Is it? I thought it was done. <laughs> I thought that was like the actual credits. You're telling me there's more? <laughs> All right, straight up stick figures. Where many of the greats have started. That was a really, really clever bit there. Love that. The creativity of everybody involved in this is really more impressive than anything. Yo, rubber hose, let's go! <laughs> Always been a fan of rubber hose. All right, and crank it up to 11. I saw some impact frames, hell yeah. Okay, now we've wrapped around. Now it's gonna be done. I swear those credits, they tripped me up, man. <laughs> Dude, this was way too fun. I, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about with this one. I'm gonna have to like, think about it a bit. Give me a second. All right, so I found something. Uh, this is really cool. This smear frame, I didn't even notice during the initial watch, but right here is going frame by frame. You see this right here, everything like loses the majority of the outline and then it goes away completely. And then it comes back even less detailed, just like color smudges on the screen. That is such a clever way to do a smear frame that I don't honestly think I've seen this variation of a smear frame before. I've seen dozens of ways to do it. This might be a new one where they like completely remove the character and then pull them back with even less detail just to show that pure speed also being added in. And I was thinking about talking about the choreography of this shot here, but I think I want to focus on how beautifully this like ring disc thing is. For those who don't know, I've never really played Genshin ever. So my actual experience with the game itself is largely through the music of it and some of the animation, that's it. But like that disc right there, that is so well done. You can see somebody put their heart and soul into making sure that rotated perfectly to speed to get it to look just right. The overall choreography of this, like I mentioned, is really good and I thought I was going to end up talking about that a little bit more, but I don't think I have anything but positive things to say about the choreography here. I think overall the blocking and everything, the speed and pace of it, is just pure gold, so I don't really have much to say. Right here, another cool smear frame. Like, I love smear frames. They're another one of my, like, guilty pleasures right up there with, uh, impact frames. Love them. This is just really neat to see. Speaking of impact frames, we got one right here. Look at the, how beautiful this is. Just taking one of the more basic forms of an impact frame, just highlighting what was shadow and shadowing the hell out of what was normal shade, and just making it hit really heavy on the impact. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> this one I really want to go through frame by frame, kind of just for me, but we can figure things out together as they go along. I really like how this is done. I believe that this uh, whole drawing here is probably rotoscoped, at least it very much looks like it is, which would kind of track. But I wanted to see especially how some of the transitions happen in the character and like look at just the the direction of everything the pointing out right out of the tip and just keeping that momentum going forward and you're not losing that direction of the character's movement so you're able to follow it with your eye really easily it, this is just gorgeous this is like straight out of paprika this is delicious animation this is jamie r level this is just gorgeous in general i've never personally done stuff like this. I've never done effects animation to this degree. It's never been my strongest suit. This is just beautiful. I really have nothing else to say about this whole sequence other than I would like to take each frame of it and eat it like it were a cake because it looks that good. <laughs> Immediately, this art style reminded me of the Newgrounds days of animation, but it also reminded me a little bit of stuff like Dave the Barbarian, for anyone that remembers that show, a few of you might. 
Uh, and it's like, of course, Ren and Stimpy, you're going to get that stuff, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the usual suspects for this sort of really loose, squishy animation, even a little bit of Camp Laszlo for those of you who are a bit younger and might remember those, and even like Amazing World Gumball did this in some of their animation styles, but they had so many it's kind of hard to remember which exact ones, but I remember seeing it. Point is, I love this really squishy evolution of Rubber Hose animation that we have a great example of later in, but... I, I just adore how every frame isn't on model, really. They just don't care. It's like, let's just draw it, let's see what happens. It's a mess, and it's a beautiful one. I, I, it's so fun to watch, everything is so alive. It also shares in the great humor that a lot of those shows had, so I have a feeling that this artist was at least partially inspired by those shows, because it's just right up that alley. It's so much fun to watch this sort of stuff. It brings back a nostalgia of my childhood, and I'm sure a few of you. It's just so nice to see it. It's pretty underrated these days. Like, you don't see stuff like this anymore. Just the era of no model sheets, lack of effort to give a shit, you just want to get it done, and have fun with it. It's not that the artist doesn't care about getting things on model. The point is, Every frame and every drawing is drawn with the utmost creative freedom to me. I love this sort of thing for that exact reason. You don't have to try too hard, you just have to have a good time. So I really love these animations, and this style is just so reminiscent of those. It's, it's making me giddy. I love it. This is another great animation style because it has a lot of that expressiveness, similar to the one we just looked at. But this one is, of course, drawn a little bit more on model. Things are kept a little bit more tight in general but you can still see the expressive freedom here and especially like I mentioned this great perspective here she starts running at the camera is just really well done it was so so clean on that run up that I almost for a split second thought it might be 3d even though my brain knew better like this one was probably animated in like Adobe Flash or animate for those who use it nowadays or even could have been Toon Boom because it does have really really powerful puppet animation abilities, but it feels, something about it feels more Flash to me. Maybe that's just the style, but something about it feels very Flash. So maybe animate, maybe. Now this one is just some straight up Treasure Planet shit. This looks gorgeous. Every perspective frame in this entire segment is really interesting. Even though they're doing stuff that's a little less conventional with stuff that tends to hold on to that perspective really tight, like adding smear frames. Like, that's not too common in stuff that tries really hard to keep perspective on point and, like, locking that in. This does both, and that's actually really interesting. The art style is a little bit loose, but still extraordinarily tight when it actually lands on the frames that matter. So I think that looks great all in all. It's just kind of weird to see, because like I said with like the Treasure Planet comparison, this style is a lot harder to draw in and keep that life to it while doing all those perspective things. So I think that it's just brilliant. There's definitely some aggressive artistry and talent being put into this one for sure. Just endless hours of studying perspective and maybe using references in order to get stuff like this, these really weird angles of the camera down. It's just really cool. Now this art style is a little bit difficult for me. Because I think it's done in CG, like a 3D program, probably Blender. The reason I think so is because these lines that this character model is made out of kind of feel like the grease pencil in Blender. And while I've never used it, I definitely can recognize that aesthetic here. But also because the character is kind of animated and not really a 3D model. But this character feels like a 2D character animated in a 3D space. Whereas, like, you can see some of these, like cheats that they're doing here, which aren't really cheats, it's just what I'm generalizing them as, but basically utilizing that 3D space in order to like squash and stretch and kind of like in between uh, just slide things into place, you know, like they don't feel like they're part of a 3D model, it feels like a bunch of 2D assets stacked and just molded together into one character design that kind of looks like it's 3D. Especially at points like this where the character feels like they're only pivoting at very precise little points. Like, you'll be able to see them kind of through here at the hips, at the elbow, at the neck, you know, like that sort of thing. They're not moving too much, they're moving just enough to give the 
the the sensation of motion. There's an illusion of movement here with just slight little bit of movement. But this is very 2D cutout style. Uh, there's not any depth to this specific model moving like this, so I have a feeling that I'm kind of correct that it is a bunch of 2D assets basically stacked together, and this was just one of the more complex ones, so they simplified it to what they could. Now, this is that short bit I thought might have been CG at first, until I realized that they were actually, like, puppets, like they're just dolls that somebody had made and put the handcrafted work into to make these happen. And I love seeing the creative ways that stop motion people make things happen. So for like this happening in the ocean, the character floating around with especially comping in the, uh, the shadow and stuff like that's all clever and what have you. But I've always thought it's amazing that people will make these sorts of physical creations and then pose them up in front of a green screen on some sort of like an armature or some other pivoted force that's holding them up that is also green screen or just removed in Photoshop afterwards, just erased. And you're able to create characters doing whatever in whatever way. You can make them fly, you can make them swim. It's really creative. Stop motion is one of my personal favorite animation mediums. It's just gorgeous. I love watching the behind the scenes on it. The general skill and creativity that goes into it is always great. And I mean, I have a Kubo poster literally right over here. So for this sequence, I am going to be talking about something negative, but I don't want the takeaway to be that I hate this art style or this artist because the rest of this sequence looks fantastic. Another great perspective artist, which it baffles me how many good perspective artists there are on this project in general because it evaded me for so long getting perspective down right. And there's so many people who are kicking my ass proverbially by just existing and doing this level of work, but at the same time, there is something right here that kind of bugs me. Well, why does he just land like that? Like, boop, 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 boop. That's not good. Probably should have had a smear frame in there. This is the place where a smear frame would have been needed. You could have put one right there, right between, like, this frame here should have been a smear frame to reach here. There's nothing in between. If they had a uh, smear frame that was heading down in that direction right at this point, that would have looked so much more natural. The fact that they just kind of boop into position does not really feel great, especially with all of the effort going on in the water down here, like leading up to it. Like the prior, like <laughs> you see all that wind kicking it up and right when the landing happens, there's so much effort being put right there. And it hurts especially because they immediately follow it up with one of those great perspective shots that wraps around and transitions to a different shot. It's so good. I feel like they put all the effort into this sequence rather than making sure that a landing felt really good and had that physical plunge into the water. It would have just made things flow a little bit more. When the rest of the animation itself was so smooth leading up to it, that was a bit jarring. That's literally my one complaint. Everything else looks great, feels great, love it. Just not that one little bit. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer, but Sometimes you just have to make those decisions, right? Now for this art style, immediately what came to mind was Omori the game, and it just has a similar general art style. But I love this like sand animation style. I don't think, like, I'm pretty sure this is all digital and is just a paintbrush that looks this way and is textured this way, but this could very well be physical sand. I've seen people do it. They're crazy for it, but I've seen it done but I feel like this one's probably digital. Uh, <laughs> I, I could be wrong though. So if I am wrong, I want this animator to tell me I'm wrong because if so, plus 50 points to Gryffindor, that's insane. If it's digital, still looks great. So really it's win-win, but man, if it was done physically, just hats off, I could never. <laughs> this is another one that almost tripped me up with the whole claymation stop motion thing. I thought these were real models for a second until I started really cluing in on the ways that the light kind of reflects off it. It doesn't feel organic as much. It's very close. The person who modeled this and made everything on the screen here did a great job at making that aesthetic 
come as close as they could in a similar way in this one to uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, the Nintendo game from a few years back where they had to do something similar and they had to get that like realistic texture onto something that wasn't actually real and make it work. They did that with like Kirby's Epic Yarn as well. There's a few games that did very similar stuff and part of that has to do with how well they animated it and in what frames per second. I'm pretty sure this was done in 24 just looking how the pacing and the choppiness feels between and I think that's why it feels this way because I mean most animations are 24 frames but for this sort of thing adding that stop motion aesthetic to it really makes it feel a little bit more latched together. There's just something about the way that stop motion is photographed that has a very specific quality to it that feels very, very similar to how they did it here. And that's a great thing. It means they did their job well. This is a beautiful sequence, stylistically and physically. Everything is so well-timed in this one. I didn't think it was going to be quite this good, but they ended up showing me better, so I can't believe I almost forgot to mention this. That is cool as hell. What a great way to use an impact frame and then showcasing this. Like, I don't know if anyone noticed that in the uh, passing. Again, I don't play the game, so I don't know if that's just like a very well-known sequence in the game, if it's a side story thing or something. But that's so cool to see this like whole changeover only in the dark and only for it to then disappear, you know? And <laughs> then the character is not there anymore. That's so clever. I love the visual storytelling of that one. What a great decision. Another stop motion one here where everything looks gorgeous. I love the creativity. I love the amount of effort put in. Somebody had to physically make this set. They had to like get a table out, get a bunch of arts and crafts shit and just go to town. I love that. I love the creativity that people put into stuff like this. It is so neat. It's humbling because I could never have the patience to do all of this in a physical context. I barely have enough patience to do it in a digital one. Like <laughs> actually going to the store, getting all the supplies you need, designing the stuff, getting it to look just right, to photograph it for a couple hours maybe, and then on to the next thing. That's nuts to me. The amount of effort and care and love put into stop motion is something I will never stop getting hyped about because I love it. I love the effort. I love it so much. And of course, I love the uh, the ape bit art style here. This sprite is adorable. Every every one of them is just so cute. And <laughs> another one of those art styles that I just cannot seem to like grasp myself. I've never been that great at pixel art, and whenever I see it, I'm like, man, that took them a while <laughs> in order to get it to look just right and get every pixel placed just as they want it to look and then follow that exact same aesthetic through every other character like oh god <laughs> i just i'd rather be going anywhere else doing anything else so i always have huge respect for pixel artists because i just i could never there's something about this art style i can't i don't really have anything to say about the animation itself but there's something about this art style that seems really familiar i can't quite put my finger on it it screams Toon Boom, though, so that might be it, but I, I don't know what it is, but something is trying to call my name about this art style. It might be the, like, kidney bean mouth thing, it might be, like, the Calar stereotypical stuff that's happening, but I'm not faulting it for that by any means. It's just a meme. I don't believe that there's a Cal art style. I never have. It's just one of those things that people like to complain about, but it's very possible that those just common denominators in the art style are kind of like harking something in my brain to like, hey, you remember this? Like, kind of. I, I just don't know exactly what. Either way, it's adorable. I love this one. I love the designs in it. I love the colors. It's fantastic. I really don't have any comments aside from that. I also don't really have much to say on this one. It just feels like whoever drew this has played a lot of Animal Crossing. You know what I mean? You see it too, right? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it looks great, looks adorable, but you can definitely tell what I'm talking about, right? Like, somebody exclusively plays Animal Crossing. Maybe a little bit of, like, I don't know, Splatoon on the side. Similar kind of thing going on there with the general art. You know what I mean? You, you see it, yep. Yeah, okay. Now this one's just kind of fun to walk through and see every design in here done in that style. No pun intended on the walking thing, by the way. Uh, but everyone looks gorgeous. Like, 
everyone has their characters on full display. It's really fun to watch. I really just like seeing how they designed everybody. There's not really much else going on on this one because the character's just moving through in that classic style. The walk cycle's great, the run cycle's great. I don't really have any comments to make there, but I love the art style. It's got such a nostalgia to it, and you can tell that the artist who did this also has that same exact nostalgia, if not making something in this style on a regular basis because they look very familiar with this art style. So this is the one that really caught me off guard when I was first going through. Uh, this is like a Cyberpunk 2077 slash Into the Spider-Verse kind of thing. It's very like pop art aesthetic going on here. I really love this. I love everything about this art style. It's got all the chromatic aberration, the comic dots. It's so cool to see the uh, the things being done in art styles like this in order to make them feel so alive, colorful, bright, vivid. It's just, it's hard to not smile when you see a style like this. I don't know if that's just me, but I feel like there's a lot of people out there who adore this sort of visual aesthetic, and I am definitely one of them. And this is definitely an offshoot of that, like, neon, high-energy kind of art, and I love, love looking at it. It always looks great, and the person who drew it leaving things like the sketch lines in here, really clever. That's why I'm feeling the, like, Into the Spider-Verse influence of this one. I'm not sure if there was. Feels like it, so I'm gonna assume there is. Either way, looks gorgeous every frame of painting in this one, and I would love to hang all of them on my wall. I'm just really letting this one play through because I love the way it looked. I love the creativity in this one with the character going in, popping back out, sweeping off the white on the background to create a fully colored. That's so cool. It's so cool. I just love that. I don't have too much to say on this one specifically, but I do love the art style being used here. I'm pretty sure this is in CG and that they're just using low poly textures to do so. Just having less detail in general just the colors where they need to be, just the shadows where they need to be, and really nothing more. Loved this uh, whole little section here with this impact frame. That was really cool, even showing them like coming in on this screen and then showing them in full body here when they arrive. That's a, a neat little way to trick the mind into just processing that there's something on the way. I really love the creativity behind a lot of impact frames and that was a really, really nice one. I don't think I've ever seen a character show up like that, like mid uh, impact frame like during the impact frames that's such a clever use to do that it gives your brain that extra frame instead of just the one where it's kind of intending to show you what's happening on screen and where but it doesn't tend to stick there for more than like one frame so having the characters there for two sets is kind of unique to me and i know i was geeking out about this one earlier i don't really have too much to say on it purely because it's just the type of art style you need to watch to understand it understanding the weight and the overall physics of Rubber Hose is an entire separate video that I could probably go into, but I won't for this. I just love it. And I just wanted to nerd out about it earlier, but I really don't have anything to say about it because they really, truly nailed that aesthetic just down to a T. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous little chunk of animation here, and I love the style overall. The designs are really fun. It's just so good. Now here's another one I'm going to let play through because what is this? All of this perspective work, all these clever shots, there's so much happening here. It would take its whole own video in order to talk about all that. I, I really don't have the time for all that, but I loved it. Same thing with this one. Just a good way to end it. Just what a nice calming way to just bring an end cap to the video. It's so pretty. This project was a lot of fun. It really was. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. I think I touched on a lot of people, so I hope nobody feels left out if I did end up skipping one of them. There was just so much stuff to go through and figure it out. I've been recording for an hour straight now, and I'm not sure how long this final video is going to be. I guess we'll have to find out, won't we? But what a project. I loved everybody's art styles in there. And while, of course, I did have some negative things to say, none of them are intended to be things to make the animator go home and just start crying because been there, uh, we, I get it. <laughs> There's always going to be a little something, something that somebody's going to point out and you're going to be like, I know, or man, I wish I saw that or thought of that. It always happens. So if any of the animators are watching this, please take my critique with a general grain of salt. If you believe it, 
go for it. Fix it for later. If you think I'm stupid, that's perfectly fine too. I get it. I am stupid. Uh, other than that, thank you all so very much for watching. And if you did like this video and you want to see more stuff like this, I usually do stuff on Honkai Impact a lot. And uh, we'll be getting to do more of those as time goes on because I have quite a few to catch up on. As I promised, I'd be getting to all of them eventually. That said, if you want to follow me and support me for all that, you know how to do all that. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!